Hi, I'm Parker Babit and welcome to the first module which is on keyword research. In this first lesson, we are going to talk about what keywords are and how to choose them using a simple five point checklist. Let's get started. So what are keywords in the context of SEO? They are simply just words and phrases that people type into search engines to find what they are looking for. For example, if you are shopping for running shoes, you might search for keywords like men's running shoes or simply just running shoes. Now, keywords are actually really important in SEO because it sets the entire foundation for search engine optimization. The basic goal of SEO is to rank your pages for keywords that your target audiences or customers are searching for. And if you are not ranking for keywords that actually get searched, then your SEO efforts are kind of meaningless. So keyword research is the process of finding keywords that people are inputting into search engines. And we'll, we'll get into this process in the upcoming lessons as well. So how do you actually choose keywords that are worth targeting? Let's run through a checklist that should help you choose keywords effectively. And the first thing that you need to check is if your keyword has search demand. Now, what is search, search demand? It represents the volume of monthly searches made for a keyword. And this is measurable with a keyword metrics that we call search volume. And you can find the search volume for a keyword by using a keyword research tool. There are many paid tools available, but I'll demonstrate how it works on a free tool that you can, can also access. So I'm going to use WordStream. For example, this query kilometers to miles, you can also choose the industry and the country. So I've selected all industries and I've selected United States. The results show that it gets searched around 673,000 times in the US. It also suggests that you, you can use some other keywords. Looking at the second checkpoint, which is to check the traffic potential of the topic. Now the traffic potential represents the total search traffic you could get if you were to rank at the top of Google for your keyword. Now you can sign up for the free version of SEMrush and get some basic insights for your website and keywords. You can enter the URL for the website that was ranked first for your keyword. So for instance, my keyword is the richest man in the world. Now from the results, you can access the potential uh, by the number of visit visits. So I'm going to enter this URL, uh, this URL, the Investopedia one. Uh, and here I have it. Everything related to the tra traffic potential is here. The number of visits, the number of the uh, unique visitors, the number of page visits, average visit duration, bounce rate. So everything is present here. There are many other tools available that can show you a much more detailed analysis, but those are paid tools. Uh, a study of 3 million keywords found that on, on an average, the top ranking page ranks for nearly a thousand other keywords in the top 10. So while you may be optimizing your page, for a main keyword, your page will likely rank for hundreds or even thousands of other relevant keywords. And because of that, the monthly traffic search potential of the topic is actually higher than the monthly search volume. And that is why traffic potential is a much more reliable metric than search volume. And the way you determine traffic potential is, look, is by looking at how much traffic the top ranking pages are getting. Now choosing keywords based on metrics alone is not a good idea, which is why the rest of the checkpoints are meant to ground you. The next point on our checklist is to assess the business potential of the keyword or the topic. Business potential simply represents the value a keyword has to your business and value really comes down to your niche as well as your business model. So an easy way to do this is by assigning scores between one to three to keywords you are researching. And the higher the number, the more important the topic is for your business. So let's say you have a site, uh, a website about golf. 
and the way you make money is by selling used golf clubs bringing this back to the business potential that means topics where you can organically recommend products to visitors would hold the highest business value for example people searching for something like like buy used golf clubs are, are are likely ready to make that purchase here so in my books this business would be of a value of 3 now keyword like best golf clubs would also be relevant to your site people because they are likely ready to make a purchase soon but just don't know which clubs to buy but it's quite easy to to plug your products because for the golf clubs you recommend you can easily link back to your products product page and that may lead visitors to making a purchase so i would give this a business value of 2 now a keyword like what is a handicap in golf would be really tough to organically recommend your products but nevertheless it's a way to attract relevant traffic to your site so i give this business value of 1 so so these would hold the lowest pro priority and anything that has a score of 0 is probably worth ignoring because it's not going to impact your business uh, business potential of or, or the bottom line so something like a a happy glimmer review would have a business value of 0 because it has nothing to do with your business other than the fact that it's fantastic movie about all that's all right moving on to the next point uh the next point on the checklist is to see if you can match searcher's intent now this is a concept that we covered in the first lesson also but of course uh, uh it's something that i'm going to keep talking about because it's really important So again, search intent represents the reason behind a searcher's query, and the way we determine that is by looking at the top ranking pages for the keyword we want to rank for. For example, let's say you have a recipes blog and you want to rank for a toaster oven. Looking at the top ranking pages, you will see that almost all of the pages are e-commerce category pages. This tells us that the intent of the searcher is likely to buy. or at least to shop around for different toaster ovens so unless you can actually satisfy the intent of the searcher it's unlikely that you will be able to rank high for this query and we'll we'll dig deeper into the search intent in the next lesson as well the final point on the checklist is to determine whether you can rank for your keyword search volume traffic potential and business potential they mean absolutely nothing if you can't rank for your keyword in the not so distant future and understanding the level of difficulty to rank for a given keyword takes a bit of analysis and practice and this is why i've created an entire lesson on assessing ranking difficulty because mastering this process will help you get predictable results in seo so i'll have i'll save that for uh, a later lesson now actually choosing keywords comes down to finding a balance in the in this checklist so you have to ask yourself does this topic drive enough traffic and have enough business value to make it worth the effort and this is the question you should ask yourself before you create pages with the intent to rank in search and these five points in the checklist are exactly what we are going to to dive to dive deeper into throughout the rest of this module so stay tuned for the next videos